I figured out what exposure means with the help of Google, and now my camera works in the dark as well, which is good because it is quite gloomy in here. So this is a good thing. Uh, and with that, I thought, well, let's just, let's throw one out there. Let's do the only black car I own um, in quite gloomy light and a car that you haven't seen yet. A car that uh, I've probably mentioned, but nobody's seen it. I haven't really said anything about it. I haven't really put it out there. Um, but they're quite important cars to me. This particular type of car is an important car to sort of what I do every day for a living and, and how I've ended up where I am and doing what I do and, and being fortunate enough to have the, you know, the space and uh, I won't say the time or the money, but definitely the space. No, I really haven't got the space either. But yeah, I have my dream car, which is an SM, which I think I may have mentioned. I think I did. I think I said, yeah, I, I bought an SM. I think I've... I've told most people. So yeah, uh, the cars I work on every day are TVRs and I have a TVR and it's behind me. There it is. There is my 1990, hang on, it's an N, but I don't know, dear. hang on. Oh, it's 95 or 96, it's one of them. 1996, no MOT, all the reds and the oranges. So she is um, not on the road at the moment. But yeah, this is it, 1996 TVR Chimera. This is um, the 400 model, which is the baby one. It is the, yeah, the slowest one, effectively. Um, don't ever, uh, say, slow in front of other TVR owners because they don't like it. Most, a lot of TVR, I mean, I, I know many TVR owners, as, as you probably guessed, I, I know quite a few, I deal with TVRs. But there are different types of TVR owner. And there are many that are in the sort of uh, Bulldogs and British Flags Brigade and everything's about being loud and brash and fast and manly and masculine and hairy chested and everything like that. Well, yeah, I not really like that. And uh, as you can probably tell, can't see the back of it at all. No, it's just too dark. Check out the lines. Um, yeah, I'm not really I'm not really about that sort of thing. And I think that does these cars a disservice as well, uh, because it's not, it's, not, it's no accident that they're sort of thought of as widow-maker cars because that's kind of how they were marketed. You know, they did their own marketing by doing outrageous things like making big noises and smoking tyres and appearing on TV programmes going sideways. And the reality is, these are actually really good cars. It really is. They ride really well. They handle quite nicely, okay? There's, there's not a huge amount of feedback, but... For for the the way in which they tour, you know, they they cross they they cross country and the way they can ride bumps and and the way they give you that kind of muscle car feel as well, uh, I think they're a fantastic package. I think it does them a, a great disservice to just um, focus on the fact that they're brash and loud and they've got a V8. Because the reality is, I mean, yeah, they're not quiet, but it's not that loud. You know, there are newer cars that are louder because they've got all their active exhausts and things and. Yeah, it goes okay, but I mean, this is a four litre, and although the book figures, TVR's book figures are a little bit, um, they, 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 no, don't get me wrong, the cars go well, they're good fun, they're good cars, and I love them, but it's not a 240 horsepower engine, this, and the five litre certainly isn't a 340 horsepower engine. Um, in the real world, it's a 3.9 litre Rover V8, it's what you get in a Discovery um, from sort of mid 90s. Um, this one has the hot wire system, so it's not an early fapper type like you get with a 3.5. It's the later system, the 14 CUX. Um, yeah, it's not particularly advanced. Uh, even for its time, it wasn't particularly advanced, but it does the job. And yeah, I mean, a, a Disco is rated at what, 188, 190 horsepower, something like that, maybe less. Um, and the Chimera is somehow expected to have found an extra, what, 50 horsepower from a naturally aspirated 60s design engine. I mean, 240 horsepower is just, that's yeah, optimistic, really. They're probably about 200, I would say. They've got slightly different cam to a, a Land Rover. They're, they're geared to rev slightly more, because obviously with a Land Rover, you you know, you want all your torque low down. Uh, you don't rev it, it's, it's all there for sort of, you know, you need the torque low down because of all the weight and the four-wheel drive and everything. Well, in these, the torque is still quite low down because of the nature of the engine, but 
they can shift it all up a little bit higher because it hasn't got as much weight to move. So in one of these, the torque uh, comes in sort of mid range, really, I'd say sort of two and a half, three thousand is when it really sort of is in its stride. Uh, you know, it can, it will pull from tick over, but it's not geared to do it. And I think that's just slightly different cam, slightly tweaked heads but I mean nothing major the other engines TVR power um, which was TVR's in-house tuning company they did breathe on all the engines I mean all these engines were breathed on by them but I'd say the four liters really didn't have much done at all um, and in the real world it's about a 200 horsepower engine I've no idea what this one has I'm guessing it isn't it's comfortably under 200 because it doesn't feel that quick or well, it certainly didn't last time I drove it which was quite some time ago so yeah it's uh it's basically that's what it is it's just one of them Obviously, TVR Power did build other versions of the engine, and some of those are quite leery. Uh, again, some of the power figures, a little bit. I mean, that's not TVR Power's doing. That's just TVR's marketing, I imagine. Um, but yeah, some of the power figures in the others are a little bit optimistic. Um, but there are some good engines. I mean, it's. Don't, I think the thing with these cars is they were sold at the time on their on their figures, on the 0-60 time and the top speed and everything like that. And you, if you focus on all that, you, you lose what they're about. Um, it, particularly with this Wheeler era of, of TVR, Peter Wheeler, the man behind, um, well, every, every TVR from the S onwards, but particularly this, the Griffith, of which the Griffith is mechanically pretty much identical to one of these. Um, slightly different body, but the chassis is, uh, is effectively the same. Some slight differences, but not much. There's not a lot in it other than the fact that most Griffiths are five litres and most Chimeras are four litres. Um, the Chimera was set up more as a Tourer, so it's got a bigger boot, slightly softer suspension, ever so slightly more space inside, but when we're talking, yeah, there's not much in it. Um, and um, yeah, that, that era of TVR, this, the Griffith, the Cerbera, um, it all went on and got a bit silly with the Tuscan and, you know, it all sort of started to go a bit downhill from there. Cause, I mean, good as they are, uh, it was just too much of the cherry to bite, I think, for TVR. Trevor. Uh, yeah, so the yeah the Wheeler era TVRs, there's something about them. It's kind of this, I mean, they're funky and they're different and they've got this feel, which you can't feel because you're not here, but this this one, because this is a 90, uh, what was it again? 96 Chimera. This is one of the last ones that doesn't have the button under the mirror to open the door. Um, Citroen CX Mark II mirrors or Series II mirrors. Um, most people would say, oh, the TVR, the Chimera has got a button under the door mirror to pop it. Well, the later ones do, yes. And as do all the Cerberus and all the Suscans and all the Samoras and all the um, Cigaruses and everything like that. But the later, the earlier Chimera has a button, which you push mechanical to let you into the frankly quite awesome cabin. Um, they're great. So I shall try and talk you through what's here. I don't even know if you can see. I know the interior light doesn't work. It's probably a bit dark to try this, but can I just put the lights on? Will that help? Mm. We can't see a huge amount at the moment, admittedly, it's because it's getting a bit dark, but basically, yeah, the, car, the cockpit is quite similar to the Griffith. Um, this car has some problems because you have a clock, fine. You have a fuel gauge, fine. You have a water temperature gauge, which has broken and fallen in there. Um, and then here, there was an oil pressure gauge, which has completely disappeared and is in there somewhere. And because the front of the dials broke off when I tried to do a burnout in the car park. Um, it, someone's also fitted this thing, Harman Kardon. And this, I mean, I don't even know if I'm gonna get rid of that because it's just, yeah, it doesn't look good. It's in the way. Voxel controls. But with this alloy, oh, you can't even see it, there's no point looking. Um, I'll come around and do this all in the daytime properly, but this is just a quick whistle stop type thing, even though it's probably gone over 15 minutes already. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 all hand built, it's, it's just good. There's some parts bin stuff, of course there is. The uh, rear view mirror, Citroen BX. Um, the wiper rails on the wipers would have been Citroen BX, but they have been replaced because in quite complete honesty, they're not very good on a BX, let alone one of these. Um, yeah, this one's got the alloy controls fixed to the Vauxhall Cavalier indicator stalk, wiper stalk. 
the, uh, the, the whole column is Cavalier. Um, the gearbox on this particular car is a Borgwarner T5. So it's uh, reverse is over and down. Um, if you get reverse to the left and up, it's got the earlier Rover gearbox. In, to, to be honest, in a 4-litre Chimera, that's fine. Uh, they struggle a bit in the bigger engine ones, but in a 4-litre Chimera or Griffith, that's absolutely fine. Um, short, stubby gear lever. I mean, that's my hand. For reference, my hand is not big. Very mechanical. Probably one of the nicest gear changes, to be honest. There's something about the way you sit in these cars with the sort of the swoopy dash in front of you and the swooping curves of the bonnet and the stubby little gear lever and the noise and the throttle, the way the throttle responds. Uh, yeah, there's some, they're unique, these cars. I'm going to get out because you can't see it here anyway, so. Um, yeah, this particular car uh, isn't on the road at the moment because there's many things on it that don't work, including the brakes. So, but I mean, yeah, yeah, they're funky cars, but people say, well, they're quirky. Well, pointlessly quirky, they say. Well, this here, right, this is the door lever. A door lever? Door knob. I didn't show you that. So, to open the door, you simply twist in the direction of the door you want to open. So if you want to open the left-hand door, you do that. I've already done the right-hand door. And people go, oh, just needlessly complicated. Why hide it? Well, the reason is, the mechanism is in the bodywork. Here. Which you can't see because it's dark. And that means that it's much easier to build it. You don't have to faff about having mechanisms in the door to do the door lock. It's all done in the body which means it can just be done by a cable from the centre console, round to there, or round to there. No moving parts in the door. So it's not quirky for the sake of it. It's a lot easier to build. These flutes in the door, which you can just about see, your hand goes inside them. Again, makes it easier to build. I mean, they look awesome, but that's to hide panel gaps. Because on this Chimera, the only panel gap you've really got to sort, and this one is quite good at the moment, Here's the back one. The bottom one is right along there. You can't see it. And you can't see that one. So to hang the door, all they had to do was set this one up. Job done. What about under the bonnet? Will you be able to see under the bonnet? Just about. So there we go. There is the, uh, the four litre, or 3.9 litre as it is really. Any better on this side? Nope. That is the uh, 3.9 litre, effectively. On well, the TV, I managed to find an extra 2cc for the brochures. Uh, luckily, very lucky. Um, yeah, that's the Rover V8. So as you can see, it's pretty, pretty familiar to anyone who knows Rover V8s. Um, everything up to here, back, is kind of normal. Obviously, you get TVR badges just stuck on a Rover rocker cover, and they have, you know, again, a Land Rover or something, they have a different badge there. TVR made their own. That just indicates that it's a 4 litre. Um, but obviously, the bit that people uh, generally pick up are the exhausts. I'm going to get a torch. There we go. Got a torch. That works better, doesn't it? So yeah, the bit that people tend to notice uh, on the crazy TVRs are the exhausts, um, which, as you can see, start off down the side there, but come forwards instead and round to the front and then drop down and then disappear off in one lump down the, uh, the other side of the engine. Which you might be able to see. Oh, you can see, yeah. Yeah, down there. So although they come out the back as a twin exhaust, um, that's just for looks, really, because it's a single when it comes out the engine. It doesn't go, split into two until halfway along the car. But um, yeah, most of it is standard Rover V8. Even the Loom is a chopped up version of the, of the standard one. Uh, TVR adding their own swell pot here. There's a few variations of that. The earlier cars only have the swell pot, um, which doubles as an expansion tank. Later cars, it's just a swell pot. And they have an expansion tank in the front. Well, for this year, but most of them went over on the inner wing. Um, same with the Griffiths. Uh, now this particular engine is a SERP engine, which means it has a flat ribbed serpentine belt, um, which is self-tensioned, and that means it can have power steering, which this car does, because it has a power steering reservoir. 
Um, they all have the power steering pipe, uh, sorry, the power steering pump pulley, which is that one there. So the car will have that regardless. If it doesn't have power steering, that will just be an idler. If they always have that pulley. So that's the telltale bit. Power steering is, um, I think it's better overall. I, I think it's, it's a tough call. Um, it's not that you lose feel. I mean, you, you lose a tiny bit of feel, um, but on the plus side, the power steering rack is slightly quicker geared, which makes driving slowly more fun. I wouldn't say it makes driving fast more fun um, because uh, it can be a bit too quick. But yeah, around town, it makes it a lot easier. Quicker geared, as I say. Um, downside is that it can be a bit unreliable and the system is quite old and the parts are not parts bin obviously uh, you know I mean obviously yeah you see those in BMWs and Mercs and all sorts but the rack is actually a TVR rack uh, it's not lifted from something else and that makes fixing it or getting new ones a bit harder specialist job um, and specialist job prices so uh, yeah if they leak and they tend to um, then it can be a bit of a pain if you've not got, uh, if you've got, sorry, power steering. But uh, yeah, other than that, um, on a four litre, it's pretty straightforward. This particular one's done uh, 50 odd thousand miles, 52,000 miles. Sounds ridiculously low for an Enridge car, but to be honest, a lot of them don't get used much. Um, a lot of TVRs are just used as occasional weekend cars. Um, the uh, down there, that there, is what's known as a pre-cat, which you have on a lot of cars these days. Basically, there's a cat there and a cat there, which are there to deal with cold start. And the main cat, catalytic converter, is there. In front of the engine at the bottom of the Y piece. But yeah, I mean, that's basically it. You know, a, a, the thing is a Chimera is it's not, that's not a scratch, that's a hair or something. The paint is a bit, the paint's a bit iffy on the bonnet. I think it's the lacquer. I think it just needs, mopping or something this this particular car um i've had for a while it was a customer's car that i used to um look after and he uh basically yeah he he left it outside quite a lot he didn't really use it um i think he just struggled with time to be honest you know young family and other things going on and he'd bring it here every every so often to get it serviced or mot'd or something like that and each time it would come here and we'd fix the problems on it and then He'd go off again and not do any miles and in that interim period something else would go wrong through lack of use and eventually he said you know what there's no point in me having it this is my second chimera i've had one before another one pretty much the same spec um the other one had a slightly better roof than this one this is not yeah oh dear that's um getting deja vu on sm seats here yeah that's uh, that's gone through that happens quite a lot um, yeah, my second Chimera, the first one I had was actually a, a joint thing with my now wife, but it was my, she was my girlfriend at the time. Um, we, uh, we bought an m uh, 95 Chimera, um, rather than trying to save for a house. We thought, no, we'll get a Chimera first. So we rented a house and bought a Chimera. Yeah, that was daft. Had that quite a while. Good memories of it. That one had a sleeved exhaust, so it was very noisy. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it, uh, now looking back at it, I mean, I, w I, I wouldn't sleeve this one. I, I think I don't really like the sound anymore. Uh, I prefer them probably a bit more original, but back in the day, I thought it sounded amazing. The silly thing was it wasn't actually, because it's a four litre, it's not that fast, you know? It's, uh, I mean, I, used to, I was 24 when we got it. So I was going around giving it large everywhere and, you know, giving it welly, trying to put other cars in their place and generally driving like a tool and and the reality was it wasn't actually that fast. I mean, I think I couldn't, I got left, well not left, I gradually got left by an RX-8 um, once and a Focus ST, didn't really have a problem. Um, and a friend of mine had an Alpha 156 GTA, the 3.2. And uh, we went to a quarter mile day at Thorny Island. And although I got a quicker time than him, um, because I was moving for less time than he was, uh, he, beat me to the line every time so and that's a front wheel drive saloon so quite a quick front wheel drive saloon granted they're dinky little cars as well this is the thing it's just, it's small you know it's about the size of an mx5 it's really well maybe tiny bit bigger it's not 
they're not big, you know. And, the, and it's technically mid-engine. It's another car like the SM. It is mid-engine because the axle line is here. It is well behind that, same as the SM. So it's it's sort of front mid-engine. It's technically mid-engine. Um, I do intend to get this one on the road as fairly soon. Um, I've got work to do, which I'll document. The brakes um, don't work. So that's a master cylinder and servo problem. It's had a new master cylinder and servo, believe it or not, a few years ago. It's one of the jobs we did for the chap who owned it, but uh, not getting used very much, probably not when it's fluid changed frequently enough, bit of corrosion, seals get turned inside out, and the master cylinder's dead again. Not ideal. Um, dot five silicon fluid might actually be a good idea on something like this, but yeah. So I've got to change that. Um, the wipers do not work, which is an MOT fail. Um, the brakes do not work, which is an MOT fail. The, the mister doesn't work, which isn't an MOT fail, but I'm going to be needing in the winter. Because by the time this car is on the road, it'll be winter. And if I haven't got a demister, I'm going to have a bad time because these things steam up for fun. Um, and also the headlights is another issue. So you might have noticed the headlamps don't look particularly bright and sparkly. Well, there's a reason for that. Here is a headlamp bowl. There you go. That one is better than that one. But basically, the headlamps in a Chimera aren't complete sealed units. They're made of individual parts. So you've got the lens, which is glued into the body, and then this trim is glued on top of it. And you've got the bowl, which sits behind it on some screws and can be adjusted like this. So the bowl moves and adjusts the beam, but the lens doesn't move with it. So getting the headlamp alignment right can be a bit of a fight. It's not too bad, but it can be a little tricky. Um, but the problem is the lenses go like this, all brown and rubbish. Um, it's not actually rust, it's, um, well, I mean, that one probably is, but uh, yeah, it's it's the, the tinning underneath. I think it's like a copper underneath for the silver to, um, to stick to. And the problem is they're not available anymore. These, I mean, this one is not ideal because it's gone and it needs re-silvering or replacing. Um, you can't get them anymore. Why can't you get them anymore? Because it's off a 1970s Scania lorry. A Scania lorry which was predominantly sold in Europe. So right-hand drive ones weren't as plentiful as, as left-hand drive ones. Meaning you can't get the bits and they've all run out and they don't make them anymore. So you can either have those ones re-silvered um, or try and fit something different. Um, and I'm gonna be trying to fit something different on this one. I think that would be the way forward. Uh, Porsche 911 ones are not dissimilar. They're a little bit smaller, I think, but I'm, I think I can make one of those fit. Um, I've ordered one. I should have ordered two, but, but that was uh, a mistake on my part. So I've got to order another one and that should be here fairly soon. Um, and so I'll fit those. That'd be one of the videos I do. Um, there's a few jobs to do on this car. The bonnet is, uh, they do that. Yeah, they go a bit broken and loose. Um, so I've got to do the wipers. I've got to do the roof. Um, the roof panel isn't in at the moment. The roof panel is down here. This lifts out, so that's a solid panel. Fiberglass. It's not carbon fiber. It's got a carbon fiber lint, uh, skin on the inside, but it isn't carbon fiber. And then this here is a hoop of fiberglass, which goes up and over, and that folds down. So you've got a, a screen there. So the screen's all split. So the roof needs changing. I mean, the roof's a bit ripped and minging anyway. Um, I, I think the panel there needs doing, if I remember rightly. It might not. Yeah, it's a bit ripped here, but I might leave that over the winter. Rather than putting a brand new one on, I might leave that one on and just change this bit. So, yeah, there's a few bits and bobs to do. I think the blower motor problem is the uh, motor itself is seized up. Um, and it keeps blowing fuses. I think they get wet. I think there's a drain that they get wet from. Because it's a hand-built car, this. Um, you know, you have to expect these kind of things. It is a hand-built in a factory, uh, in a unit, not dissimilar from this in terms of condition and age. And um, yeah, it's, uh, to be honest, I think for what they achieved up there, they deserve great credit. They really do. Um, I, I get really sick of people Jump, either jumping on the sort of lazy bandwagon, all TVIs are unreliable, all they fall apart and everything like that. If you treat it as, as a mass, if you treat it like a Volkswagen Golf, then yes, it will. 
it will bite you in the ass. But then if you treat it like a Volkswagen Golf, you probably shouldn't buy one. You know, they're specialist cars. You can use them every day, but you have to know what you're doing. You have to have someone look after them if you don't, if you can't rather, uh, who knows them well. It's all about, spe as with any specialist car, it's all about specialists. I'm not saying that because I am one. Any of the specialists should know what they're doing with them. The trick with these cars is prevention over cure. It's putting one up on the ramp, looking and going, oh, that doesn't look good. Because you know where to look. You know, oh, the anti-roll bar mount's fracturing. You know, that's uh, that's going to need doing before it leaves you on the side of the road. Um, you know, exhaust manifold gaskets, uh, uh, the bolts were loose. I've tightened them up to stop them blowing. It's that kind of thing. So, yeah, but otherwise, mechanically, they're tough as old boots. Wiring is probably the letdown. You've got a lot more wiring than you'd normally need because it's a fiberglass bodied car, which means you have to have separate earths for everything. And then come to compound that, the wiring looms are pre-made uh, Land Rover types, which have been modified. And then there's some of TVR's own in it, and it's all a bit, yeah, there's, there's probably a good few kilos worth of wiring the car doesn't actually need. So. Some people say, oh, wow, you, you know so much about these cars. You go on and on and on, you should write a book. I have. Observe. You can buy these books. This is a book I did. It's a buyer's guide for the Chimera and the Griffith. Available from shops, I imagine. And um, yeah, it's basically for those who are looking to buy one. So if you don't know anything about them, that's what those books are for. Um, they're, they're not, you know, if you know loads about them already, you're not going to learn anything new by reading them, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people think they know about these cars, but they don't. Um, so yeah, that basically just helps people. Uh, it's, a, it's arranged by a publisher called Veloci, who do the Essential Buyer's Guide range. I did another one earlier, which was the S. This is the first one I did, the S series, um, which I've had a few of as well. Um, there's one on the ramp. That's an S. Honestly, that's an S. It doesn't look it, there's a bit missing. But uh, yeah, eventually this Chimera will end up like that. I will be taking the body off and restoring the car underneath and getting everything done. Suspension, bushes, ball joints, camshaft probably. Um, yeah, she'll be, she'll be spot on afterwards. Because when these things are done up and when you get everything right on and the bushes, the, you know, alignment, it will take all the play out of it, all the slop out of it, all the knocks out of it, get everything working. They're brilliant. They're so much fun. They're just so nice. They're just so, so good. They ride far better than they've got. They've given nowhere near enough credit for how well these cars ride. They're so comfortable, you know? And uh, yeah, you can make them loud and larry and put big wheels on them and straight through exhaust and everything. You lose the, 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 the fun of the touring element of them. The fact you can just drive this thing to Scotland with a roof off, drive up there, two and a half thousand revs the whole way, burbling up the motorway, doing a fairly good economy, actually. 25 to the gallon is probably achievable. Um, I know 25 to the gallon? pretty good well, I know but 25 to the gallon in a four litre v8 it's not that bad so I guess what you probably want is to hear it um, it does run so I shall briefly before the battery dies on the camera I have to lock it and unlock it because I've got the old alarm there's the fuel pump oh we can't see where have I put my torch? So this is a standard car, totally original. Still got the cats in it, because I can smell them. Oh, it's making me eyes water a bit. Yeah, they're smelly cars. Can't really hear much at the moment, you need separate camera and microphones and everything, but... Yeah, she runs quite sweet! Burble, burble, burble. So yeah, we'll do proper videos and proper noises and stuff like that in the future with it. But there you go, TVR Chimera, uh, just an introduction, nothing more than that. Um, it'll go on, I'll have a nightmare edit in this one, it's supposed to be five minutes and I've ended up talking for probably half an hour. But um, I haven't scratched the surface on these cars, there's a lot. I'll do a video on 
the book, making the book. I'm actually writing another book at the moment because um, I've got all this spare time. Um, I'm having a nightmare doing that, actually. I'm so pernickety about it. I'm, I'm really struggling because it's, it's a much bigger project than the other ones. Much more exciting, but, oh, yeah, the pressure. It's, um, it's, it's not a, a mechanical book. It's like everything. It's history and everything like that. But, um, yeah. Yeah. There'll be much more to come on the TVR, including taking it apart and uh, doing all the work. And uh, I'll look around some of the others as well. I'm sure some of the customers won't mind. Um, you got, let's say, that is an S, it's a VAS. Quite a grotty VAS in places. Although, actually, in the key areas here, we're taking this one apart tomorrow. In the key areas in the corners, it's actually all right. I think it's been mod um, repaired already. It's a bit, so some ugly welding on it, but yeah. It's been off the road a long time, this one. So. This one sounds fantastic. Um, it had a custom exhaust on it and it sounded absolutely brutal. <laughs> yeah, so uh, perhaps rather predictably, um, my battery ran out uh, because my five minute video where I started with only 10% battery left or something turned into a half hour video. But um, I can take this off now, I'm not looking down anymore. Um, not a, uh, a detailed video on the Chimera, I'm, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I'll do a, a better video on the Chimera. Um, try and go through the history and everything like that. I mean, the quickest way to learn it all is... Why the book? Um, well, because that does tell you the history of it. And uh, not in huge detail, as I say, this is a pocket guide. This is a paperback guide. They're only a few quid. They're not hit the mic with it then, didn't they? Yeah, they're only, um, they're only a few quid. So it says 13.99 on the back, but I'm sure you'll find it cheaper. Um, so yeah, don't, it's not, you know, not a big history book or anything. Unless you're the guy on Amazon who left me a review um, with like one star after it came out, after all the hard work. Bang, one star. Very disappointing. He's going to return it. Because um, <laughs> it wasn't big enough. It's a pocket guide. I don't know how big his pockets are, but so. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll end it on that. Uh, yeah, cheers for watching. Um, Plenty more TV. I mean, TVR content is something I have in abundance. Um, I can get tons, so it's just it's finding time to do it. Um, the uh, yeah, the Chimera is the, is the focus because that's my car, and I will um, yeah, we'll, I'll focus. We'll cover putting it back on the road. It hasn't been on the road for a few years, and uh, we'll get it on the road, get it serviced, get the things that are uh, that are broken fixed on it, and then run it for a bit, uh, do some adventures in it. Probably won't tow anything with it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, eventually it will come off the road and have uh, the body taken off um, and the chassis done. So you can see what I do for a living. And uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's basically, we can use Vecchi to take the chassis down to get coated and painted and blasted and the rest of it. So you can see everything basically, um, take you through the whole thing. So uh, that, that won't be this year, that'll be possibly next year, possibly the year after, it really depends. Uh, well, I suppose it depends on whether I'm alive or not at that point. But also, um, it depends on uh, how well the car does next year. If it, if it goes back onto the road and it runs, because there's no, it's a bit rusty underneath at the moment, but there's no holes in it, so it's not like screaming for it. Um, and if it goes back on the road and drives well and gives no issue, then keep driving it but I mean I think it there are things on it that they're going to need sorting the suspension bushes tend to fail around this sort of era at uh, this sort of age rather so yeah um other than that yeah that's that's pretty much it so yeah there'll be proper driving content but this is a diary type introduction type vlog thing um on the chimera uh parked in a dark unit uh, that you can't drive because it's off the road and the brakes don't work and um and the lights don't work at the moment so yeah that's probably nothing like what you hoped it would be. So yeah, thanks for watching.